All right. We are getting started for the monthly webinar here at Company Cam. It is Wednesday, March 13th. I am joined by Warren Wilgus with All Star Public Adjusters, Will Guy Enterprises. Warren, how are you today? I'm great. Thanks for having me, John. I'm excited, I'm excited to be here. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to let some people filter in. Um, and just to make sure the chat's working, typically as we get started each month, we will have people post in the chat of the webinar where they are coming in from. So um, it looks like we have 70 plus folks registered. So um, this is fantastic. But if you're online and you're just joining us and we're just getting started here, go ahead, jump in the chat, post where you are coming in from. Uh, whether it's, you know, state, city, international, we have, looks like April's joining us from Charlottesville, Virginia. Morning, April. Paul's in the DFW area. Paul, I am from Dallas, lived in Plano, even though I'm in Omaha now. So small world, Lumberton, North Carolina, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Warren is in New Mexico. I am in Omaha, Nebraska. It looks like Henry's coming in from Houston. Tucson, Arizona, Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Hi, David. Hi, Shane. A lot of folks joining today already. This is this is exciting. Well, Warren, let's go ahead and get started as people are kind of filtering in. And I, I'll, I'll throw this out, too, before we, we get into introductions. For those that miss it, hey, Cleve's coming from Silicon Valley. For those that miss it, um, uh, we will have this up on YouTube later um this week along with a webinar recap blog as well so um don't panic if you miss part of this or if somebody on your team was going to join and miss it we will have this up on youtube of course those that are joining live feel free to ask questions i will try to toss those out to warren if you have specific questions about your business or a topic that he's talking about i'll make sure that i keep my eye on the chat and get those to Warren. So I just wanted to put that out there. A, if you miss it, we'll have it on YouTube along with the recap blog. And please post those questions in the chat. Once again, Warren Wilgus is joining us today from All Star Public Adjusters. Warren, I'm so excited to have you with us. And even though we're talking about documentation and being on the on the adjuster side of things, go ahead and give us an introduction to how you got into this side of the business because this has not been a lifelong thing for you. This has been something that you may not necessarily thought you were going to get into. Talk about where you began in the trades and all this and, and how you got to where you are today. Yeah, absolutely. Again, I'm, I'm glad to be here and happy to talk about that. Uh, so back in 16, 17, 2016, 17, long before the pandemic, um, I was in a BNI chapter. I was actually a chapter president for a local chapter in Albuquerque. And one of our members uh, was a GB98 in New Mexico. That's a general contractor, residential and commercial both. And he said, hey, I'm just wondering, would you be willing to do um, some construction sales? Now, I, have a, I have a sales background. Prior to that, I was in the entertainment industry, uh, LA and national tours and so on and so forth. But um, was home, had a family, living that life. And I said, well, I have a sales background, yes but I know nothing about construction. <laughs> and so I said, so if you want, I mean, if you want to teach me, sure, why not? So we tried it out. The first few months were a little rough. Again, that massive learning curve um, it was mostly retail, block and concrete at that time. And again, it was on the side. It wasn't a big deal. Sure. Um, it started picking up more and more going into 18. I went full time with that company, eight team here in New Mexico. We had uh, three or four storms um hailstorms and wind events but but in that year in particular hailstorms and particularly at the end of july everything changed it was the biggest hailstorm the local market has seen in, in quite a while mm. and so that's where i really started getting my feet wet in the insurance world started noticing discrepancies one carrier is paying for this the other carrier is paying for that they're on the same street right next door what's going on uh came in contact with uh, an adjuster who was telling me about uh, Hail Trace. Hail Trace was putting on an event in Colorado. That's when I found out about Company Cam. Hmm. And 2019, started training, started going into networking events, conferences, so on and so forth. And at a Highway to Hail event put on by uh, Company Cam in Denver, I heard a public adjuster speak for the first time. I was enjoying what I was doing, but that resonated with me. And I said, that's, that's what I want to do. 
uh, get to the pandemic, labor's difficult, materials difficult. We were doing a lot of flat roofs. ISO was particularly difficult to source in our market, at least. Um, so I said, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of this headache. I'm, I'm going to finally make the switch. And I've been a public adjuster now for a couple of years. Wow. So. Isn't it amazing the turns we take to get where we are now, <laughs> right? Um, that's at, So let, let, let's start at the very beginning, because I think... In our world, especially with company cam, we talk about true transparency, documentation, having all those things. But when I think people hear the word documentation, it's kind of one of those words that we hear all the time in business for whatever you're in, whether you're in the trades or not. And it's like, oh, we should document, we should document, we should document. But at its core, the way you look at it, why is documentation important? Because I know all of us have varying definitions of documentation and the way we think about it in terms of documenting what we're working on the before the after all that but in your mind in your world if somebody said hey why is documentation important what would you tell them i mean documentation is everything number one it can directly affect your profit your profit margin um your overhead depending on what the circumstances are we were talking just a little bit before we got started about those cya moments where mm -hmm. something goes off the rail and it's not your fault. Yep. Well, how do you show it's not your fault? Um, you were sharing an HVAC story. I've seen it with roofers. Um, one job in particular, uh, the stucco was damaged beforehand. Mm. It was just, you know, sun dried yep. and worn out. Go and do the job. And all of a sudden the customer saying, oh, look at the stucco. Yeah, look at the stucco. And we had you know, pictures prior to production, several months prior to production. Yeah. So it can be, it can be the difference of, well, the description on this particular webinar can be the difference of a thousand dollars. You mind if I share my starter story? No, absolutely. So on the production side, because before I was public adjuster, again, I was, I was project manager, senior project manager. Uh, we had a job that was actually the same job with, with the stucco situation. The carrier said, if you can show us a picture or pictures of starter existing, we will pay it. Okay. I thought, sure, not a problem. If it's there, it's there. If it's not, it's not. Well, I knew it was there and I checked with the foreman and it was there. And I went through, I don't know, 80 to 100 pictures five, six times. We didn't take the best production photos. Great pre photos, great post photos, very little production photos. Mm -hmm. I found one picture, one starter in the background the difference of 862 dollars on that particular file one picture wow. one photo oh. just under a thousand dollars in savings amazing yeah. yeah wow so it can it can it can it can cover you again cya or it can add to your your bottom line it's interesting because i think we've seen people do varying degrees some take it like you said very seriously to make sure that they're getting the pre the post and the during of a project, of a job site. Um, in your mind, if you were running a company, whose responsibility, I mean, I, I assume, yes, the business owner's responsibility is to set expectations where this is how we document. Yes. But when you're looking at all the aspects of documentation, is it the business owner's responsibility to make sure everyone's taking it? Is it important on every level from sales? you know, client relations, staff, those in the field, those not in the field, those in the office. Like when you break down, like who is responsible for setting up good documentation practices, your advice would be what to that? So a couple things, I go back to kind of like, again, that, that kind of turning point, that origin point in my, in my personal journey. I remember going to the SRC in 2019. I think that's when we first got set up with company cam. And mm -hmm. I forgot who the speaker was but it was pictures, pictures, pictures. It was everybody is responsible for pictures, everybody. I would say that sales, yes, they're responsible for pictures. Um, the sizzle with the client can yeah. be, hey, your roof's damaged, well, look at this. Or if you're in a retail model, hey, here's a project we just did. We put in some nice concrete. We, we did a little bit of landscaping. This is the before on that on that file. And this is the after those photos can be critical within the sales within the sales department. Uh, I think that it's also, if you have a project manager system or if you have the salespeople doing project management, 
I think it becomes part of them, part of its company culture. Mm -hmm. Um, Where I think it becomes very difficult is if you're, if your crews are W2s or if they're subs. Subs, there's a lot of, you got to be careful. There's implications. There's this, there's that. If you're paying them additional to get those photos, that's ultimately going to affect your bottom line. Mm -hmm. I think it's worth the extra few bucks to get it done. That's me. I'm not a roofing contractor. I'm not a general contractor. I'm a public adjuster at the moment. Um, But I think that that can really be critical for the company at large. And then post-production, I think, is a combination. I would love to see more consistency with owners going out and checking their own jobs. I know it becomes difficult, especially if you're a bigger company. That's nearly impossible. But there needs to be some sort of quality control. The other thing I'll say on that topic about pictures is, and I should have gone back and checked the stats, but I know SFY, which is one of the supplementing companies, there's a lot out there, but in particular SFY, uh, does a week does a monthly webinar on photo uh, exterior and then an interior and if my memory serves correctly they recommend 200 to 300 photos pre-production mm. i mean wow and if you're using company cam and it's not going on your phone you're not clogging up your device take a thousand photos i don't care whatever you need for you and it depends on the job too the complexity the scope yeah and i was gonna say so there's there's it's like parallel roads, right? So there's the documentation to cover yourself in case something goes wrong. There's the documentation that you may use strictly internally, right? It's just for training or it's just for us to know that this happened. Then there's the other aspect of the marketing. Like you said, like, Hey, here's something we've worked on. And that the way we always, or the way I always have put it. And I had a, I had a contractor in New Jersey tell me this. He was like, I always said in this day and age, when, there's so much competition from a device and our attention and everything else. When you're talking to a prospective customer, how much time do you have if they say, Hey, can you show me something you've worked on? If you're doing this and it's going on and on and on and on and on, and you can't quickly show them things you're proud of. So his, his example was, Hey, show me something you're proud of. How long does it take you to do that? Now imagine you're doing that in front of the customer. So there's that documentation aspect. And then, like you said, the pre-production part of it that may not be used for marketing purposes. This is before we've touched anything or done anything, but look in the 300 mark, how important that is, which segues me to this. What are some things that you see on your side? If you're thinking about the way people currently take photos, like if they come up and say, Oh no, I do a great job with documentation. We take photos with this. Is there something on the one hand that you think is undervalued? Like you probably under prioritize taking photos at this stage of the process or taking enough photos or taking this type of photo or annotating on a photo and then that. And then what is maybe the opposite of that for you where it's like, folks, you guys are spending a lot of time on this. It's probably not as important as this. What are your thoughts on those two, those two things? Sure. So one thing that really helped me in my transition from the construction side over to being a public adjuster I took a lot of time. The adjuster world has changed. I'm not going to, I'm not going to throw stones, but it's changed. And I, even in my short time, I know some people have been out there 20, 30 years and, you know, this is their lifelong career that, you know, their second, third generations. I'm not, but even in my time in this industry, a few years ago, I saw adjusters who were super thorough. And I watched them and I was like, okay, they're taking really good shots of the elevations. They're taking really good shots of this. One thing I've noticed that makes a difference for me, and I hope this answers your question. I'm kind of going down a rabbit hole. No, 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 this is great. This is great. Yeah. So your overview shot is for me, in my opinion, your overview shot is just as important as your close up. If Mm. I don't know where that pipe jack is, if I don't know, where that brick is if you're doing a brick veneer or whatever if i don't know where it is i'm not going to be able to in my position get it paid for Mm. or if i'm your crew member how am i going to know what needs to be fixed if i don't have that so i think it's critical to take overview a medium shot and a close-up now what i've had a lot of success with i started implementing this about a year year and a half ago Maybe I go overboard. My, my superpower is I, I have OCD. 
So, so <laughs> me too. We're going to be friends. <laughs> so I want to know exactly how many pipe jacks there are, how many turbines there are, how many exhaust vents are they up to four inch? Are they six to eight inch? I have a file right now that's getting ready to go to production, hopefully in the next month or two. Again, I'm on the I'm on the public adjuster side. I'm just hoping the contractor can get it knocked out. The carrier has paid for one turbine. There are three turbines. All three have damage. So if I get good shots of one, two, three, and I actually go on the roof with my chalk, one, two, three. The door's already open. They've already extended the coverage for those items. I just got to get it corrected. Hey, you know what? There's actually three, two of which are painted. I know you got one, just so you know. Can we just get that corrected? But then on the other side, that same project and, and the contractor and, and their sales manager might be watching today. I'm not sure. Um, it has a chimney. And the chimney, is it's warranted for a cricket. Well, a cricket doesn't exist. So again, we have that. Where to go to the flip side of what you're talking about you know what are some things i have a file that i'm in the middle of closing out and i got the i got the contractor packet for the photos the good photos they really are yeah but there's like five photos of decking and then three photos of this and then 20 photos of decking and it's just all over the map and i'm not trying to be lazy but i've got to spend extra time organizing their photos because it was so, you know, buckshot, just off the hip, like there was no system. If I could impart anything, documentation, businesses, whatever, systems and process makes all the difference in the world. You got time back on the clock. And then for those of you that are in sales, you can go sell another account. You're done. Sure. It's sure. over. Right. If if you had a... <clears throat> Let's, let's put this in also a, like a different phrasing. If you were coaching somebody on this and said, I have a limited amount of time at this job site. Like I've got four minutes or, you know, some arbitrary number that's not long. If they had to go get something that would help you the most and you were saying, okay, in four minutes, I know that's not a lot of time to plan out taking 825 photos. Sure. So plan of attack in your world for them with four minutes is what's most important and oh by the way if you get this at the end bonus but not as important as what i'm about to tell you so i would say two things from a contractor perspective from the production side again i keep going back to cya it's yep. your business and i can't be held accountable for what you do or what you don't do so if mm -hmm. you have photos that you know hey that could be a problem later i need to grab i'm here for four minutes i need to grab that photo now yeah. So, that, so that later I don't have to have that awkward conversation with the client. I right. think that's pretty critical for the, for the contractors from my side. And it's not all money grab, but, but legitimate items don't ask for unicorns. If it's a three tab roof, don't ask for a metal roof. Just, just don't do it. But the things that, you know, for sure, again, my starter story, if I had known that I needed four pictures of starter, I guarantee you what I would have grabbed four pictures of starter. And right. You average $800, $900 a, a job over 10, 20 jobs, however many you're doing in a month, over a year, that's a lot. So pick your battles. If you've got right. a limited time, pick the items you know you're going to get paid for with the right documentation or pictures. How much is general, like in a place like Company Cam, where you have the ability to annotate, label, tag, draw on? How important is that with photos when it makes its way to you uh, to say this is on the northeast corner of this, you know, or whatever the case may be. How, how big is annotation on the photos in your opinion? Sure. So you mentioned earlier, I'll, I'll kind of do a quick plug here. You mentioned earlier, Will Guy Enterprises. Will Guy Enterprises, what I do my uh, appraisal work through consulting, um, should I pick up the rare supplemental file where I'm just kind of helping you clean up something? I had some folks in Tennessee. I have some folks who've asked me about appraisal work in Louisiana and Florida. If I really need to get down there, I'd go down there. If it was, if I needed to be on site, but if I'm just helping clean up a file and I don't have the annotation, that's critical. And I know I keep bringing up insurance, but the majority, I mean, most everything I do these days is insurance based. The majority of adjusters 
they don't know. I talked to an adjuster. Again, I'm trying to leave the carrier name off, but an adjuster that was with a prominent carrier and she'd been there three years, never once been in the field. Mm. If, if, if she doesn't know what that item is, where it's at, what it should look like, if they don't know, I would say this, especially for those of you that are in sales, kiss, keep it simple. Just keep it simple. The, the easier it can be, the more effective it's going to be, the easier it's going to be for whatever aspect you're looking at, whether it's coverage, CYA, whatever the case may be. Keep it simple. That's great advice. Uh, we do, if anybody has questions, like I said, if you want to throw questions into the chat, I will get to them. Uh, we will, you know, we'll even, let, you know, stories that you have of documentation. I'm sure we would love to hear about that both both on Warren's side and my side, we love documentation. We love to hear when it, when it helps people. Um, when you, you had the great story about when it's kind of saved you and your team. Have there been instances the other way where it's like, if I just had one picture, it would have made the haul the difference in the world, but I, we didn't have it. And, and I can't go back in time and do it. How many instances have you had in your career like that, where it's one photo that you ended up not getting. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Um, again, mostly or top. even or even more positive ones where you did have sure. photos. Sure. Yeah. Um, again, the superpower being OCD, but uh, but there, I will say yes, there are certainly photos that I wish I had. I, unfortunately, yeah. I can't think of an, a specific example. However, yeah. I'm slowly. It's like a drip system. I've got a tar and gravel with a carrier it's flat roof we have a ton of flat roofs for those of you not familiar with new mexico um we have probably just as many flat roofs as we do pitched so it's a very different market there's like thousands of many commercial projects all over the state uh so it's a different it's a different scenario but i've got a tar and gravel roof we've got coverage open and you know most people will be like oh they paid for the parapet walls we're kind of done Mm. But there was, I will share this, they, the independent adjuster paid for a penetration that was in about two and a half, three feet of the parapet wall, but they didn't pay for all the others. So I mm. went, found that penetration that was within two and a half to three feet. And then I found every other penetration that was within two and a half, three feet. So now we're, it's a drip system, but we're getting there. I, I think ultimately with the right documentation, pictures, manufacturers, installation instructions, code as necessary and as needed. Um, I think we're going to get that roof paid for in full and it's tar and gravel. That's kind of my nemesis. So I can't think of an example. I know they exist. I know that they've happened, but I can't yeah. think of an example right off where I, I just didn't have the, the picture. Sure. So. Um, if you will kind of finish up on this, if there's no questions, but if, if you were going in and you were going to set expectations for the employees, like a new system, like, here's a new documentation system we're going to put into place. And you were kind of not subs, right? So we're not talking about for, for subcontractors, but if you were going to set the expectation and to tell employees, like, look, this is how we can get the most out of these photos, both from an organization standpoint, where we keep these photos and you were starting a business tomorrow. How would you kind of, what expectations would you set for your team? to get these photos in order to make it the best possible situation for CYA, for marketing, for all those things. So what comes to my mind right away, and I was thinking about this prior to the webinar, you know, kind of leading up to this, like, what am I going to talk about? What about this? What about that? There's, there's two things in particular. Number one, SFY, I believe balance claims has it. There's different, actually no balance claims has it. Um, there's different companies out there that will provide a scope sheet. You're systemizing the process. Here's your front elevation, your left elevation, rear right. Here's the roof. Here's this slope. Here's that slope. And you're just going down a list. What's even better? I, no, I don't work for company cam. But what's <laughs> even better is I know that the the templates have been being rolled out the last year, maybe two years, whatever it's been. And I know that there is a template specific to scope. If you have a system, um, I'm, I'm following somebody named Howard Partridge. I went to one of their conferences recently. And the whole takeaway, the whole push that, that, that week was creating a predictable, profitable 
turnkey business. Mm. So if you can find the predictability aspect of the of the file, you always know there's going to be pipe checks. You always know there's going to be hip and ridge. You always know whatever it's going to be. That's going to every single time just capture that and create a system for it. Mm. Then it becomes profitable the more you have that documentation. And then eventually, for those that are owners or those that will go on to be owners, you can you can create a turnkey business. Interesting. Uh, i got a couple questions here. First one is, uh, you had mentioned incentivizing subs. What does a payout to subcontractors for documentation look like? Is it a per photo, per project? How would you... How would you map that out or what's kind of best case scenario for that? I think the mapping out in terms of the monetary aspects is going to be really subjective to your market, to your relationship with your subs between the contractor. But I will say this, I've seen in my experience and other companies that do it, and I'll pick on decking because decking can be a, a really big ticket and a really hot contentious item sometimes, especially with the carriers. If they don't get those photos, if they don't show the quarter inch gap or greater, mm. then, and if you don't, and if you or the client, let's, let's focus on the client, the policyholder, don't get it paid for, there has to be some sort of uh, accountability between the two parties. If they didn't set you up for success, yes, you owe for it, but you got to have a hard conversation. So I would say maybe it's, production based if you if you bring me this and we get it paid for you get this it's a mm -hmm. trade off because if you don't get it paid for and you're paying extra money then you're you have higher overhead sure chris brings up a good point he said you know for subcontractors like, i think it could become part a part of their process as well especially if utilizing the timestamp feature on photos it helps them create their own documentation of when they arrive and when they leave a job site that's a great point i the way i have always thought about documentation is it can't hurt anyone. It could only help potentially everyone because you could use it for different purposes. We could break it down for the business owner and say, yeah, it is can be used for marketing. It is like a little walking portfolio for you to say, look, this is what we did with this. It is a CYA thing. It is an insurance thing. It is a warranty thing. And there's so much to it. But again, even just knowing when you were, think about it just for tax purposes on mileage, like, where were you and for how long and when did you drive? And, oh, I didn't keep a record of that trip. Oh, but I've got photos of this. I always think about all the different ways as small business owners that you need some sort of, oh, I forgot to write down this. Oh, I forgot to grab this. Oh, I and then not just a week later, but even maybe six months later, it's the same way like you were saying. I thought it's so crucial about zooming out for photos because no matter how you're organizing them, even in company cam, if you take a bunch of zoomed in photos of the corner of, say, a, a, a gutter and you've installed the same gutter in similar projects and it's zoomed in, you don't know what address it is. You're not sure where it's at. So unless you have it tagged into something like company cam, if it was just sitting on your camera roll, it's like, well, what? That could be anything. I mean, it's so close. So. Yeah, I, I think that's a good point that Chris brings up, that even just having a timestamp feature or the ability to associate it with something to know when was I there and when did I leave, I think is huge. Absolutely. Yeah, and, I, and I've definitely been there <clears throat> more on the on the production side, but that random B-roll on your device, yeah. like, what does this go to? I don't even know what house this is, like you were saying. The other thing about the subs and, and kind of what Chris was saying is we talked about CYA a couple of times the sub can also see why mm. if, if there's a leak and it's like, well, who's responsible for it. And the contractor's going to go back and talk to the sub, but the sub took good pictures and said, we did that. There could be something else. It could be, I think, I don't know if it was when we did, were doing the webinar or not, but you were talking about a, a satellite company that had come in and, and created, yeah. you know, damage that nobody had known about. Well, okay. is it the contractor's fault? Is the contractor in the sub or did someone else walk the property subsequently that caused damage that has nothing to do with the installing party. Yep. I, my other favorite story I heard was depending on what stage the think of the home building process, depending on what stage you're at, if you're doing something at a stage of the home building process that eventually is going to be covered up by future building, 
and you warn somebody like, listen, this something doesn't, I, this wasn't our team, but somebody on this team, this doesn't look right before that drywall goes down and this is covered up. You might want to see this right now. And so grabbing the photo, I think is just as crucial when it's not something that maybe we pops to mind, like exterior or hardscape or driveways or roofs, something that we can always walk outside and go take a look at. It's the stuff behind or at the beginning level of the stages of putting something together where, whether it is a home or a building, et cetera, et cetera. And it was like, that's really interesting. I didn't think about it from the standpoint of, I need to document this before it's no longer, you know, visible for me to see. And then a year later, if something goes wrong and all of a sudden there's a leak through this wall, we can say, Oh, remember I was showing you that I, something looked off here. And so, um, yeah, I, I like you said, I think it's, I think it's a, there's just there's so many use cases and it can't and again it can't hurt you it can't hurt you to have the backup and and to to be able to know that it's there and make it easy and and yeah i not that it's going to be uh a plug for company cam but if it's not clogging up your camera roll and you have unlimited photos there's no reason not to take as many as possible yeah you know absolutely yeah, well, I don't know if there's any other questions. We got some good ones in, but I thought this was a great discussion. Warren, I just want to thank you for the time and being a part of this month's webinar. I think this is great stuff. And um, yeah, I, I just, uh, I think this has been fantastic. It's uh, it, it's always good to talk about documentation. And I'm not just saying that because I work for company <laughs> cam. Uh, yes, you've proven there are many reasons why it is uh crucial to document everything so anyway thank you so much for your time really appreciate yeah. it warren thank thank you john thank you christian thank you company cam it was, it was uh honor to be here today I, enjoy, I enjoyed having a little chat here absolutely thanks everybody we'll talk to you next month